Okay, then uh, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, Mr. Jibbin, uh, who invited me for this event. And uh, Principal Dr. Tina, for your very warm uh, welcome speech. And other faculty members, students, and um, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'm really thankful to you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to uh, share with you all my experiences as an entrepreneur, as a woman, and uh, as a citizen of this country. Um, actually, um, I did my degree in uh, Mimila College, and I passed out in uh, 1974. So it was a long time back. And um, each time I interact with uh, students, all my uh, life as a student come, comes back to my memory. And it is really, really a uh, happy uh, time I'm having with students. Thank you so much. A deer runs 90 kilometer per hour. And the tiger speed is only 50 kilometers per hour. But still, the deer becomes a victim. Have you ever thought why? This, uh, when the tiger chases the deer, the deer feels I am much inferior in strength and in size. And he forgets that he can run really, really faster than the tiger. This fear makes the uh, deer turn back every time, now and then. And uh, its speed comes down drastically. And that's how the tiger is able to uh, jump on the deer and catch him and eat him and kill him and eat him. So there is a big lesson from here. The lack of confidence and the fear distracts us and we are not able to perform this is what happens in business also when we lose our confidence we are not able to perform well also and fear conquers am i going to fail am i going to fall this fear holds us back so we get distracted and everything goes out of control, the money, the, uh, the product lines, everything. We get confused and we are not able to perform. So I think uh, for an entrepreneur, courage is a very, very important factor, a must have factor for a, an entrepreneur. And how to inculcate courage in children? First of all, we have to learn how to fail. I was born in a family with 12 children and I was the 11th child. My father was a textile come jewelry merchant. And I was, we were staying just right at the back of the shop. So I had my primary education in uh, entrepreneurship, business, and also uh, about cloth, the fibers, the yarns, silk, cotton, whatever, all those things, even garments, because there was a tailor sitting just uh, in a corner of the shop. And I used to sit and watch how he cuts and how he stitches garments. That was my primary education in garment making. I had a lot of hobbies, lots of hobbies. Uh, I cook, I, I used to help my mother. I was my mother's right hand. Uh, I lost my father when I was uh, 15 years. I was in 10th standard. I, my results had just come out. I was a very, very average student. I didn't even get a first class. I got only 50, 55 percentage mark. But uh, during those years, uh, getting a first class, that was very difficult. Only one or two students of a school got first class. 
above 60 percent but things are different now now even if you get 96 percentage people will ask oh only 96 so think <laughs> time has changed and uh, i used to do all kinds of uh, domestic work because uh, i was a very uh, active person and i never like to sit idle I cannot sit idle. I have to do something creative. Creativity was my part of life. I I was interested in gardening, cooking, interior decoration, painting, drawing, all kinds of things. Singing also. Yeah, I used to sing. So, uh, but uh, I never dreamed that one day I will become a businesswoman. In my time, a woman becoming a businesswoman that was not there at all. Maybe in other countries, not in India. I don't think. Uh, 70s, I'm talking about. But then uh, I can share with you uh, how I chased my dreams. When I say my dreams, it is not business. My hobbies. So I will share my experiences, how my hobby became my business. I got married in, uh, I studied in a very uh, uh, simple uh, government school in Vatakancheri. It's a small town. And uh, I, uh, I studied in a government school. So, uh, of course, I had the luck of uh, uh, studying three years in a convent school where I could uh, get a little bit of knowledge in English grammar and English literature. That's how I'm able to speak to you in English. So when my when colleges invite me for these talks, I, I usually, usually I ask them which medium. Then they say, most colleges say Malayalam, which is easy for me. But then I opt to speak in English because uh, you have to get used or you have to practice in speaking in English. Because the other day I read a newspaper, 25,000 uh, engineers are emerging out of engineering colleges every year. And where is the job here in the state? They have to go out of the state and sometimes, most of the times, in, out of the country. So without good English communication, you cannot survive outside our state and outside our country also. So I would ask all college authorities, make it a point uh, to uh, educate your children, your students, to communicate in English. Make the medium in English, even though you are permitted to write exams in Malayalam. You cannot survive out, outside the state or outside the country with Malayalam. That is very, very evident. There are no industries here. There are no much businesses here where you can work. So you have to go out. For this, you need English. And uh, uh, my father died and my mother was uh, just a housewife. Uh, when I remember, my father had all white hair. Uh, he must be 68 or something. I am mean, now 66. So almost two years senior to me. But he looked very old and very sick. Maybe those days, uh, they didn't know how we need ex good exercise and uh, we have to take care when we take food, uh, obesity and all that. And my father also didn't know. So maybe he, so that he was a bit unhealthy. He had a heart disease and that's how he died. Now we know uh, medically, how to be medically fit, how to look after our health, how to eat healthy food. We know everything, but are we doing it? That's a doubtful thing. See, uh, things have changed and uh, these uh, young boys and girls these days, they always discuss about food. That chicken, this biryani, that is grilled uh, meat, this, that, burgers and cheese, uh, cheese burgers or pizzas and all 
junk food and they think that is a very fashion of the day but i don't agree with that eating is not for life you should not live to eat you eat to live that is what we are doing here um uh, we take really uh, good uh, care in our food we have only lunch as a square meal for breakfast we have fruits and for dinner we have only salads this has been going on for last 15 20 years so we take care not to put on weight and and also i spend every day one hour for my exercise sometimes yoga sometimes aerobics sometimes i go to gym but i make it a point that i spend 45 minutes for my body so uh i'm coming from a very family both of my parents were diabetic so i'm very careful about that i don't want to be a diabetic so i take care i eat very little sugar i avoid maida sugar and all that eat healthy food i never buy maida and also milk these are the three poisonous things that you should avoid maida sugar and milk three white things so take care because only if you are alive you are able to perform and uh, i got married in 77 1977 i did my degree in home science after my degree to after through two three years i got married during those days going for a job that was not uh, very common in aristocratic families so only if you are very badly need of money uh, girls used to work so i couldn't also go to work even though i liked i was not permitted so i got married to this man what's up sir he had just started his industry 6 months back just a small room with a table and some chairs and four five employees that was we got and i have seen how we got uh, emerging out like a big brand from scratch of course i uh, i had lot of learnings from this brand and i'm sure that has helped me in my business also we got married and on the first anniversary i had the first child and uh, after two years one more child so the first few years i was very hectic for me uh, working very hard to bring up the two boys who were very active and uh, my husband had hardly any time to help me in all household chores or rather uh, men were not supposed to help me in household chores <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. as our uh, tradition says in india and in kerala especially so it was a woman's job to bring up the kids do everything in the house so i was not different in that matter and uh, when my children grew up i thought okay i had lots of hobbies i wanted to stitch uh, wanted to stitch uh, uh, garments but then being boys i had no choice i couldn't do much to uh, make dresses for boys because their dresses were all short and all that which was not my passion if it was girls i think i would have uh, satisfied my uh, thirst by stitching crocs for them but then i didn't have a cho- choice and uh, then i told my husband i'm feeling bored i have to do something my children are grown up uh, and uh, i don't want to i being an active person i was like feeling out of the like out of uh, fish out of water so i told my husband he said okay you come to vegard help me for some uh, in some work so i started going to vegard uh, i worked there for one year it was so boring for me i didn't know anything about electronics electrical uh, or finance all those were uh, greek to me so I, f- i felt so out of the fish out of water like feeling i said no which is this is not going to work i want to do something which i know which is my passion um and um, during those years my one of my sister uh, she was uh, abandoned by her husband with two small girls so and my mother was old and my brothers were busy with their uh, business and all that and nobody really came to her help so i told my husband i want to help her i want to make her make a living for her so we started a shop that it didn't take off 
So ultimately, that was the reason I'm, I'm, why I'm here. I, I wanted to help my sister to uh, 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 make a living for her. So um, then um, the, the, shop, the shop was no, not doing well. So we took all these garments to uh, some other uh, good shops. And they gave us orders. We, we stitched garments and started supplying to her. Me and my uh, sister, we used to go in the car with all the dresses packed. So uh, that was the beginning. So my husband said, um, if you are planning like that, you have to start in a big way. I can uh, give you some loan on interest. I can give you my office for rent. So that is how I started Vistar. And I can give you the name Vistar, which was a, um, a registered trade name he had in his hand. So I took all this, and that's how I started Vistar. Uh, he helped me to recruit people, and he came with me to Bombay to source materials for the first time. And, the, and after that, uh, he, of course, I, I used to interact with him. I, get, I used to get advice from him. But uh, he didn't know about garments, cloth, and all that because the product knowledge he didn't have. So it was my uh, contribution to uh, make the garments and source the materials and all that. And he used to come to office uh, once in a month for a meeting and uh, just uh, supervise, in general supervise. So that's how I started Vistar. I started Vistar as uh, Indian garments. and. Um, um, when after some years, there was a huge uh, requirement of in the ways. The, the, there was hardly any good uh, quality in the ways in the market. So all my uh, dealers asked me, ma'am, why don't you start that? So I thought, okay, good opportunity. I'll start because there is requirement. The supply was uh, less and demand was small. I thought, okay, it's a good opportunity. I didn't even tell my husband that I'm going to start bra. Because I thought, okay, this is one more product. Why should I uh, discuss that? I went to market. I tried to get a good pattern maker for bra, but I couldn't get. So I went to market, oh, bought a whole lot of uh, innovations, took out the stitches and learned how they grade the sizes. Also, my pattern maker uh, was there to help me and both of both of us together, we learned about the pattern making and we made samples and they took the samples to the market, but there was very good uh, response. I think being a woman, um, it helped me to know the requirement of a bra, how it should be, whether it should be, the elastic should be the best, uh, how the pattern should be, all that uh, helped me a lot. I used to wear and find out what are the flaws of the garment and that's how I learned. And uh, that was the beginning. And then, the, I, I mean, then I didn't have to look back because uh, 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 compared to the outerwear or the salwar kameez, here uh, there was a good, good value for the quality of the garment, the durability of the garment, the comfort of the garment. All this was very important being in a ways. So I could really, really contribute to that. And after five years, uh, the innovators, uh, I start, then after four years, I started panties. And another four years, I started brief vest, then leggings, then t shirts, the track suits. Now we have about 3,500 SKUs. SKU means stop keeping units, like uh, the number of colors, the number of sizes, all together. So many 3,500 types of garments we deal with. And uh, I followed VGAT, the production uh, mechanism. Uh, we uh, engaged uh, sisters in convents. We supply the material, the hook, the strap, the elastic, uh, everything. And my tailors and my cutting master went to each unit and trained them. Now we have 16 units. And about six, 50 to 60 women in each unit. That's only for bra. Panty, brief, vest, leggings, t-shirts, all those products are 
source uh, uh, manufactured in Tirupur. We have an office there. Vistar has now 230 uh, direct employees and another 900 to 1,000 indirect employees who are engaged in the production. And uh, we have a, then all the other business things, the uh, details uh, uh, Mr. Jipin uh, shared with you. See, when my husband gave me loan, I learned the value of money. If he had given me a lot of money, gone giving me money for the business, actually I would have spoiled. That's how I could understand the value of money. So I was very careful in spending. I thought, okay, I have to make money. I have to give him rent. I have to give him uh, interest. So that is what helped me actually. So, and uh, I think every woman has to have her own income. Nobody has said that you have to depend on your father when you are young. When you lose your father, you have to depend on your brothers. And even you get married, you have to depend on your husband. And when the husband died, you have to die, so you have to depend on your sons. No, no way. You don't have to depend on anyone. God has given every human being a lot of intelligence, a lot of skills, a lot of talents, and a lot of courage. Everything God has given. It is your duty to develop all your skills, all your talents, all your courage, all your knowledge, and excel in your field. Please understand this. Never, never depend on anyone in your life. You have to be on your own legs. You have to be independent. I'm very clear on this. Never, never depend on others. They will not be there in your, throughout, in your, throughout your life. They may leave after some time. But you have to survive. So um, you have to uh, first enjoy what you are doing. One more thing I would like to tell you. Every individual cannot be an entrepreneur. This is very, very clear. If 100 people start industry or any business, only 5% uh, is successful. So you have to realize your potential. Maybe you are a, you have you can excel being a good doctor, an engineer, or a CA, or skilled workers. Maybe a tailor. Maybe many many things are there. So you have to uh, recognize your uh, talent, and then you just nurture it, and you grow. As very intellectual people, each Malayali should be thinking differently. I think each individual can make a small change in the society, a small change in your life also. So whatever you do, you enjoy. You enjoy. You have to enjoy what you do also. This is very important. So it is better to start a business, uh, the area which you know. If you are very good at cooking, it may be food business. If you are very uh, skilled in engineering, it may be something, some production in production engineering. Or if you are very good at garments, it's a garment business. If you are very good at uh, furniture, furniture business, gardening, landscaping and garden nursery. So there is no limit to your business. Our immediate neighbor, he makes, uh, his business is empty bottle business. What is empty bottle business? Because his, uh, uh, maybe his uh, parents or their parents were like collecting empty bottles and paper and all that they used to sell. But he, when he uh, became, <coughs> he became uh, uh, big, he thought, okay, I should take this business forward. He collected all the bottles from all the bars and houses. He washed it, packed it, and sent back to the distilleries and the uh, uh, liquor uh, factories. And now it is a big business, and he's a millionaire now. So there is no business that you cannot do any business is any business is a business 
when i went to uh, uh, vietnam they took us to a factory what they are making they are making a uh, beautiful artifacts with uh, ducks egg shells i'll show you the product later ducks egg shells they collect it and they break it and they make into big beautiful wall hangings coasters plates trays uh, and what not so many things just mere egg shells what we throw so you look around you see so many things which can be made into products when you when you uh, visit a christmas uh, <clears throat> decoration shop during christmas you must have seen what all things uh, china makes with twigs with leaves with uh, all waste materials they make beautiful uh, christmas decorations or decorative uh, uh, products so there is look around and you will you can find out your business <clears throat> is it better always better to uh, start a business uh, not to make fast money okay don't go for business you used to hear one chakola fairness oil on the tv on the newspaper on radio everywhere now where is chakola fairness oil because nobody became fair became fair using that oil so they stopped using it so <clears throat> if you want to do a sustainable business don't try to cheat your customers respect your customers and make your customers life comfortable more comfortable that is your product when i started in a wear business there is no good in a wear so i wanted to make my customers life comfortable i want to have good in a wear for me to because we didn't get good in a wear here that's how i started it now lots of women and men also come and tell me ma'am we are we are using your in a wear is very good quality very good we are very thankful to you and your organization is the reflection of your energy if you are very cool and timid and inactive and passive i don't think that will reflect in in your business you have to be very active very very smart very innovative and that will reflect in your business when the covid days came <clears throat> all our units were closed <clears throat> and no revenue for 3 months altogether we had 250 employees we had about 20 25 units lying idle then uh, from wanderla one manager called me and said ma'am uh, can you make 100 uh, uh, mask for us because we need so i thought okay okay i'll make mask for you i made 100 masks then suddenly struck my mind oh my god all my units are lying idle all my machineries all my workers all my raw materials are just lying lying idle in the uh, warehouse so why can't i make uh, this an opportunity so i called my manager and said okay uh, now uh, the wanderla people asked only 100 masks but we can make lakhs and lakhs of masks because people need it and there is no mask available in the market so why don't we look at, uh, at that as an opportunity so my manager uh, he agreed with that and uh, you you won't believe in one month we started making lakhs and lakhs of masks and uh, in uh, and the revenue came in came in crores and we could open all the units we could give job to the jobless workers of the factory at least they could uh, earn for 500 rupees per month which was uh, zero for three months so uh, that is another thing you have to um, find out opportunities nobody will your employees will not may not do that all this important decisions you have to take yourself also <clears throat> we had uh, lots of products but then i realized most of the products are not uh, uh, no visibility for the customers we have about 100 types of bra but the dealers will stock only maybe 15 or the to the maximum 20 designs all the other 80 designs were like 
lying idle in my warehouse. So, and that that was the best products. A bit expensive, but the most uh, uh, beautiful products. So I was feeling very frustrated. My God, all my new products are not uh, reaching to the customers. So I thought, okay, I should have my own showroom. So, uh, and uh, all the big dealers, uh, they were very reluctant to stock new brands because they got used to a brand and they don't want more brands. And all my friends, whenever we give uh, advertise in Vanita new, new products, my friends will ask Sheila, we see all your products in Vanita, but not in the shops. What to do? We don't get it. And online marketing was uh, sales were not very uh, uh, common those days. Now it is very common. Now all of us buy online and online market is growing like you can't imagine the percentage. We grow about 500 times every month in online online sales. And that's how I thought, okay, I should have my own shop. So I drove a uh, length and breadth of uh, uh, MG Road. And I found out a showroom in a uh, uh, small showroom in Central Square. And I came to the office and told them, see, there's one showroom there. But then we have to keep, and we had uh, three brands during those days, Vanessa for Bra, Valero for <coughs> Brief and West, <coughs> and uh, we started the company's name. And we got, now we have the, got the shop there, but what signage we will keep? I had three names at my hand. I couldn't sleep that night. And meanwhile, I had planned the, um, an advertisement movie for Valero. The jingle was ready. The production house was ready. It was uh, Sijoy Vargis of uh, uh, TBC factory. He's a film actor also, Sijoy Vargis. So I call, next day I called Sijoy. Sijoy, hold on, because I'm planning to uh, compile all the names into one name, Vista. So you hold on with, uh, you just change the jingle with the Vista name. Also, you find the... Uh, uh, some female models also because I want to make a movie for with all my products, men's, women's, because it's a single name, Vista. I took this decision in my mind, but none of the managers agreed with that. The advertisement agency also didn't agree with that because Vanessa is a, such a beautiful name, ma'am. Why should you change it? But I said I had no, I have no choice. I have, I can have only one brand name because. I cannot have three uh, uh, names on my signage of the shop. So overnight, I decided my brand is going to be Vista, and the signage is Vista, and my only one brand, the making into one brand name. That's how Vista name I brought again as the brand. There was a lot of uh, objections from all directions. Uh, my uh, friends in Rotary, all the men said, Sheila, if you put Vista, we won't buy. I said, okay, you don't buy. But I'll make you buy on one day. I said. <laughs> and I had decided on my mind. So all these important decisions you have to take yourself. Because you are the one to risk. Even for the starting the shop, everybody said, oh my God, our products are very uh, um, low price products. We, I don't think we get the rent is 75,000. Selling this product, I don't think we can pay 75,000 rent, the AC, the electricity charge, and the employees. I said, maybe you will make 15 or 20 lakhs of loss. I can sell my gold and give the money to the company. Okay, the company will not have to suffer. So you don't worry about that. I am going to start the shop. That's how I started. Now we have 17 shops. We start exclusive shops and all the shops are doing so well. And they're doing even better during uh, Corona days because they don't want to go to the multi-branded big A-class shops. So all our shops are doing so well. So what a blessing that I took that important decision then and there. So, so all this make you successful, all these important decisions. The single name of Vistar brand and starting the and then the products. <laughs> when I started men's products, even my son said, "Mommy, don't meddle with uh, men's uh, uh, garments because there are 
national players, international players. It's very tough. I said, okay, let me try. So I just tried. And I'm sure in five years, we will be leading in Kerala. Now we, we are the leaders in women's wear, kids wear. Another five years, I'm sure at least I'll be below jockey. Maybe I cannot overtake jockey because they are too big to overtake. But I can, I have a space below jockey. I'll be there. So, uh, and creating new customers. That's important. Uh, I have a friend who started a shop, a boutique with Salwar kami, sari, kurta, blouse, everything. Stage by stage, she uh, thought, okay, sari is the best product, so I'll stop all the other products. I'll I'll restrict to only saris. What happened? The kurta wearing ladies, they stopped coming. The party wear salwar kameez, they stopped coming. So only sari and blouse. And the sari wearing women's number was drastically dropping, dropping, dropping. Finally, she had to close the shop. So to increase the number of customers is very important. So that is what a good thing I'm doing now. Recently, two years back, I started, I uh, you know, we, uh, brought out an innovative product, a sari blouse. Because I thought stitching a blouse to your fit is very, very difficult. Whether it is Paris tailors, any tailor, when they stitch, there is some flaws here and there. So I thought, why not make a blouse like a leggy? That is how I made a comfy blouse. Now that that became a hit for V Star, and uh, I couldn't. I attract a lot of new uh, customers to our shops. So like this, you have to think on on uh, go on thinking how to improve your business, how to bring in new products, how to bring in new customers, how to make your existing customers happy. These are all very important. Because your customer is your brand ambassador. And uh, uh, and we recruit, uh, and many people ask, uh, you could succeed only because, uh, am I exceeding the time? No, ma'am. Hello? No, no. Okay. How much more time I have? Uh, 15 minutes more, ma'am. 15 minutes, okay, thank yes. you. <laughs> because when I speak, you know, I... Uh, I lost my uh, uh, time limit and okay. So uh, uh, many people ask you could succeed only because uh, your husband is there, Vigard is there. Okay, that is a factor. I agree. Uh, I had the money, I had all the supports, but a business doesn't take off when you start. It has to be sustain sustainable business. For that, my contribution should be there, isn't it? So uh, it is good that I had my husband uh, to help me in the beginning, but from there I had to take it off. So also uh, people ask, how do you get good employees? How you get uh, 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 such a minimum attrition from the uh, uh, in the workers or in the employees. Actually, when we recruit, we don't recruit people from very rich families because they don't, they don't need money. We recruit uh, uh, people from very poor families, but academically very well uh, uh, performed. And uh, they need money. They are very badly in need of money. So they will work hard. They will have more integrity to the brand, to the uh, organization. These are all very important. So that is how we select. Uh, uh, and we don't, uh, maybe we guard, we star and Wanderla together, thousands of employees, but we don't give job to any of our relatives. None of our relatives, our friends, children, neighbors, uh, natives, no one is there in our organization. Only on merit basis we recruit people. Because what will happen is when you employ your relatives, uh, you cannot just fire him. If he doesn't do Excel, you'll have to fire him, any employee. 
if it is a relative then your relationship will be cut then and there so uh, that we made a very uh, important decisions that's a strategical decision my husband so we are all following that so all these important factors help me to success to be successful um and uh, finally uh, being a woman entrepreneur uh we we are the i think women are the best multitaskers even uh, uh, ma'am principal will agree with me because we have to look after our kids we have to look after our house we have to look after our profession our social life uh everything is uh comes under a woman you know a man he can have the bit coffee he can dress up and go to his office but what about a woman she has to pack her lunch her kids lunch husband's lunch uh take the children to the school bus uh go to school for meetings pick the child from the school uh, uh make coffee make snacks teach the children all this are coming under a woman so a woman is like she has 100 hands so a woman is the best multitasker i feel so women don't feel rejected don't feel you are inferior in fact you are superior to men so just uh, uh, gain your confidence and just go ahead that is it you will be having many 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 hobbies some of you will be good must be good painters uh, good in um, interior decoration gardening so pick up your hobby uh, i picked up my hobby as a business being a commerce student uh, yeah some of you can uh, be uh, uh, accountants and uh, you pursue your uh, profession ca and become auditors and all that and if you cannot excel in that direction you have to look at your hobbies then there comes your uh, hobbies as your business so my hobbies i know lot of women you, uh, one lady from uh, pala she is uh, uh, she runs his ants bakery it is her hobby and making pickles and uh, even uh, i know many boys who are very fond of dogs they run kennels that's a big business dog trainers my dog trainer come here and he charges uh, 950 Uh, rupees per day to train the dog so <laughs> there is no limit to business uh when you look at uh, any business you have to think about the raw materials uh and uh, uh you have to get good employees you have to look at all these points where to get good uh, workers where to get good uh, raw material Uh, where which is the best price you can get the raw material so uh so th that that is uh, the factors when you look at business uh one tree makes millions of matchsticks isn't it but one matchstick is enough to burn millions of trees see these are the realities of life when you look at uh, many uh, look at things you come across very many many factors like this in life uh when i started there was hardly any woman in business but now you see how many women and i'm sure so many women have uh, uh acquired uh courage to start business from me also they come and tell me ma'am i didn't start my business to make money I didn't need money. I had a big house, big car. I had a lot of money. Everything I had, but I thought I have some capabilities, some uh, talents. I want to sharpen my talents. And uh, when I, uh, when the uh, uh, COVID days came, I thought, okay, a lot of time I'm wasting. So I should uh, start my painting again. I may, I painted hundred paintings during this uh, lockdown period. I painted my sa, uh, so many saris also. Look at my sari. This I painted. I don't know whether you can see this painted sarees. <laughs> so uh, don't waste your time. Be creative, create money, and 
uh, see if you have more money there's no problem you can uh, earn how much money you want uh, you can start health clubs uh, uh, then uh, or you can make soaps one of my friend she makes uh, she they both of them are uh, it engineers in us they came back and then they started a piggery they grow uh, they have a big farm they uh, grow pigs uh, they ranch uh, that is the, their brand ranch folk so any business you can make up health clubs uh, so there is no limit uh, so be good and do good also give back to the society keep your house clean keep your environment clean don't throw plastic on the road don't throw plastic bottles into the drains make your life more comfortable if you keep your drains neat there won't be any mosquitoes so each one has to contribute to all this it is high time we think about all these factors and make the living comfortable take care you have to be alive first of all to do business and the other things that i would like to share uh, from my experience uh, i have great pleasure to inaugurate this uh, um, commerce club what do you call it commerce club uh, commerce, commerce association. association yes i declare this 40th year of commerce association um now greeted thank you so much for giving me this opportunity thank you hope you enjoyed it thank you ma'am for the inspirational words that was thought provoking and has instilled a light of passion in all of us to achieve great things uh now if anyone has any questions please ask good morning ma'am good morning ma'am good morning okay myself bibia i'm a third year bcom student yeah okay ma'am my question is Uh, today innovative business have more importance that if a business yes. become innovative then it will be profitable also then yes. if a person choose his hobby as a business when he is able to uh, go ahead with both uh, hobbies plus innovation uh your question is can your hobby as an innovative business is that the question yes ma'am yeah any hobbies can be innovative see uh when you say food okay uh there are lots of varieties of food recently my friend she started pudichor she has a uh, uh, he she has this banana plants in the their yard so she started pudichor so that became a, an innovative business and she was a good cook actually she is an architect so for the last 5 months she has no job work they have an architect form husband and wife architects but they have no job because <laughs> nobody is building any new homes nothing is happening in the uh, um, real estate business so both of them started cooking and making pudichor and it is a like it is doing very well so it is food business but it is not the same food business we used to have it's an innovative business isn't it so Uh, th- th- that is what i said uh, don't do the same um, um, business that is going on do something different so every uh, successful person they don't do a different thing they do do things differently have you noticed that they don't do any such a very innovative thing but they do the same thing in a different fashion there was innovation in the market so what did i do i thought the cutting is not good the quality is not good i want to make a better product so i made a better product and that's how i could become the uh, leader in this state itself so uh, so 
there is no limit for any business any hobbies uh, and another thing one of my friends make this uh, what do you call uh, terrariums so now most of the many people live in uh, flats so they cannot maintain a big garden but they want to enjoy garden so what they, what uh, this lady does she uh, makes small garden in small glass uh, pots or any urns or even uh, trays she makes a small garden some plants some pebbles some uh, small bird and all things like that so that's a small garden in a bowl it's a big business so uh, that's an innovative idea right when you look at uh, landscaping and gardening this is an innovative idea like that in every field there is innovative products innovative idea and there is scope for new business okay is it clear okay ma'am thanks uh, good morning ma'am ma my name is emily mathi okay uh, actually i have two questions uh, for you my first question is that uh, we all know uh, we got start as 1990s and we uh, and we also know that the mindset of uh, people who lived in uh, such a period uh even women uh women were not ready to uh, speak about their undergarments and uh the such products uh yeah. in such duration how you bring this product into the market and what was your first challenge and how you faced it <clears throat> see when i started many many eyebrows were raised why this business why this business but in my mind i had no such thought that this was a filthy business i thought people were not getting good in a way so i make in a way my priority was to make the customers life more comfortable nothing else was on my mind and nothing else held me back also i had problems at home also my husband also sometimes we used to get angry when when he sees advertisement women wearing bra i said what is wrong women wearing bra that's like you wearing a brief they wearing bra what is so obscene about it of course it has to be uh, it ha i mean it, it should not be a vulgar or, or anything but then it is a basic necessity and i have to display my product i cannot uh, sell my product showing a woman wearing a parda or uh, all covered i have to show my uh, uh, garments and i don't uh, i don't think that's a sin or anything or it's a filthy business in my mind but then you cannot satisfy everybody and do a business you cannot make every all the people happy all the time so it is your conscience that is more important if you feel you are not doing anything wrong that is good enough that's how i did and till date i have no repentant i mean i i have no worries like <clears throat> why did i start this no i'm totally happy whatever the other people think that doesn't bother me my mind is clear what i am doing is right that's it Uh, thank you, ma'am. I have one more question. When I yeah. uh, go, uh, when I was going through a uh, through an interview that you have attended in the happiness project, uh, yes, I feel so happy uh, to uh, hear your voice. Uh, uh, the uh, the anger, the anger uh, asked a question uh, that if you are uh, you are not uh, from a business background family, oh. uh, then what will be your future? <laughs> I I simply love your reply that you say that you will. Uh, Uh, you never want to sit. Uh, uh, you never want to simply sit in the house. You uh, yes. you want to do something, and you will be something yes. on some day. Uh, yes. On standing this point, what you want to say to all this uh, all this woman who are listening to you now? What is the life message that you have to uh, give to them? Yes. First of all, you should be having a goal. What uh, do I want to become? Uh, 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 like a, a cook in the kitchen, or just a housewife, 
if you have that vision then you can have taxi uh, i'll be happy doing uh, some cooking and sleeping and watching tv and uh, on the whatsapp i'm happy fine that is your life but why you waste time each human being is like filled with so much potential and why you waste all those potential all all your skills and talents it is a sin that is what i consider as a sin wasting time doing nothing creative doing uh, not being productive that is the sin because that you are wasting your intelligence you are wasting your talents you are wasting the uh, resources that is a sin so never ever waste your resources sharpen all your skills learn whatever possible i learned swimming i learned painting i learned um uh, 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 carnatic music gardening uh, bonsai flower arrangements <laughs> cooking now i bake my my own bread and uh, uh, cookies i learned that during uh, pizza i cook and my granddaughter said my mama this is the best pizza <laughs> so uh don't waste time that is the main thing each individual have to keep in mind and don't use don't keep your phone in your hand all the time your life is spoiled give time for everything for, for your body for your mind for learning read good books now there is vast uh potential vast opportunities online you can sell anything online you don't have need to have a shop you don't need to have a, a huge factory you can source and sell so there is vast opportunities tap the opportunities that's it for that you should be very very uh uh you have to be keep your wide eyes wide open and grab the opportunities there are opportunities even in covid days now it is food industry that is flourishing everywhere okay that's fine so you have to do something one of my friend now she is a beautician she has three parlors all the three parlors are closed so she came up with a new idea fulka basket fulka rotis and she uh, and uh, all these uh, uh, chefs you know they have no job actually hotel people so she's uh, recruited one chef and now she is uh, making uh, fulka rotis and all north indian dishes and she is doing very well and all her parlors are closed but she wanted something to uh, uh, be and the way you for the uh, sustainability she wanted money so this resilient uh, kind of uh, that uh, 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 thought in your mind you have to just get up and keep your wide open and find out the opportunities and be just active in some business and you have to survive this is the survival of the fittest so many shops are being closed but don't stop there do something else and survive that's very important yes enough no that's very clear thank you thanks be something don't be a nothing be something that's very important that's what uh, when I, the, the happiness program she asked me if you were not a business woman what you would have been i would be somebody that i'm sure i would not be a nobody <laughs> because i know i have resources and i have to use it i have to sharpen my skills and i will be become somebody that is for sure Yes. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Good morning. Um, I'm Maria Paul from Thodi C. Um, so my next question is, uh, ma'am, have you achieved all your goals? Um, and can you give some tips for the competitive world, uh, right now? I don't think any person will achieve their 
goal to the fullest until he dies the same with me now our presence is only in kerala tamil nadu karnataka and andhra my goal is never never will be complete until i die so the, my next goal is to become a very the best brand in india the whole india that's my brand, uh, goal now but i don't stop there i will not stop there what is the next question um miss ma'am can you tell the um, some tips for the uh, competitive world right now facing and uh, for the uh, new entrepreneur to a uh, woman entrepreneur to be uh, be a, as a part of like be a part like you in today's generation yes <clears throat> see i think from my generation things have changed and now opportunities are more for you uh, girls and boys because the need of the society is not the same it is something else so many people are into you now the sanitizers masks and soaps and all kinds of health products so that is the need of the hour so maybe that that is going to become another business altogether for many you see so it is not the same always the time will ask you many many uh, new products you understand so yes, uh, yeah i know a girl see when i see all the waste on the road side i feel my god lot of plastics are there if we could uh, uh, convert all these plastics to something useful buckets or mugs or anything so the when you look around lot of raw materials are just lying like this so even coke, coke uh, tins they uh, i don't know so many things are there so right. when you look into the i know a girl who does uh, 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 what's her business she's from bangalore she does uh, this um, waste management i forgot the name of the firm a young girl she is after this waste that became a passion now she runs a huge business where they can seg- she makes machines which can segregate uh, plastics and other waste and uh, uh, just uh, uh, deal with that the waste management i forgot the name no i'll, I'll share with you later okay so look around okay. then you find uh, all possibilities and opportunities that's it Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, I'm Sia. Good morning. And my question is, uh, what were the marketing techniques uh, that you have adopted to make the product popular? First and foremost, it is the product. Okay, the product has to be hassle-free. It has to be perfect. That is the first step. once you have the best product in your hand then you need customers of course once your customers buy it if they are happy i'm sure they'll tell 100 people how oh, i bought that product is very good okay that's one part now when i started i had to it i said everything was so expensive like let it be vanitha magazine they charge 1.5 lakhs for one page or 2 lakhs i think 2 lakhs now and uh, uh, manorama newspaper such a small ad you have to pay minimum 35 to 40 thousand so uh, but things have changed now now it's all uh, online and uh, uh, facebook and uh, instagram it lots of opportunities for uh, very less expensive methods so uh i once i got the new product the product was uh, perfect i did little small small advertisements in small magazines not very expensive magazines with uh, so advertisements always i look after also new products these are the two avenues that i look after in this stuff so it has to be very it has to communicate 
to the customer what is your product what is your plus the products plus points what is the speciality of your products compared to the other products in the market these are all very important so you have you have to have your own usps also you have to communicate it well to your customers then i think that's enough